African. Truly African. Good afternoon and welcome to Pan-African News on Pan-African Television with me, Mordia Nane Nate. Now let's take a look at our top stories making headlines. In today's bulletin, resident of Pane appeals for the construction of their road. Now chaos at Anyawoshi as resident demonstrates over spot traffic lights. We will be speaking to Efia Tenge for more information. Now we will bring back the true incremism in Ghana, says Gam running mate. Moving straight to our business front, affected DKM customers in BA welcome former President Mohammed's promise to pay their locked up fund when re-elected. Now there's many other stories including sport, international and entertainment coming up shortly in the next one hour. Stay tuned. in detail. First Lady Rebecca Kufu has called on private entities to support the Nanado-led government to help address youth unemployment in the country. She was speaking at the launch of the Young African Work Project in Accra. The Young Africa Works Project, which is in three components aimed at transforming young men and women into successful entrepreneurs, beneficiaries will be trained and supported to become innovative and creative entrepreneurs. Addressing the media, First Lady Rebecca Akufu Addo called on the private sector to help government in addressing the unemployment deficit in the country and promised government support for the youth. Realizing the immense potential impact of our youth to our national development and economic growth, His Excellency President Nana Adodanka Akufuado's government introduced several youth initiatives. Figures from the Ministry of Information indicate that between 2017 and 2020, the Nation Builders Corp has created about 100,000 jobs for young people. Have to clap. <laughs> we also have the National Entrepreneurship and Innovation Program, which provides an integrated support, including funding for startups and young businesses. However, more needs to be done, and government cannot do it alone. We need the private sector and other bodies to support youth employment and entrepreneurship. We all know that youth and unemployment has the potential to create serious social consequences. It could lead to social exclusion and unrest. Invest, investing in decent job creation, in education and training opportunities for our young people will create a more prosperous and stable society. That is why we need better collaboration and partnerships involving us all. 
Greater Accra Regional Minister Ishmael Ashite welcomed the project in his region and pledged his infringing support for the project. It is therefore welcoming that the Young African Work Initiative will open up more opportunities for the young ones to support government's work in creating jobs for the youth. I will urge all the young ones to take advantage of this Young African West project to improve their lives. Executive Director of National Businesses for Small Scale Industries, Kosi Yanki Aye, explained to Pan African News the importance of the project and stated the modalities of one being a beneficiary. So the National Board for Small Scale Industries is the government agency set up and mandated to strengthen micro, small and medium enterprises. We've been in existence since 1981. 1985, we went uh, into full implementation mode. And the work we're trying to achieve really is to support across the nation, businesses, MSMEs, entrepreneurs, people who have ideas to grow and build a stronger nation. So why NVSSI? Three years ago, I was approached by MasterCard Foundation. I'd worked with them in the past, and they came back looking at other interventions where we can build and grow MSMEs and look at women and youth particularly. So we sat with them and designed a program, which is what you see under three components, the innovation, creativity, and eyes as one component, apprenticeship to entrepreneurship, which is another component, and the MBA, which is the MSME Business Acceleration. These are all um, programs that NBSSI had designed under its Youth Employment and Entrepreneurship Program. And so we took these programs with MasterCard Foundation and designed it to suit what we were trying to do, focusing on the youth. And it is uh, important that NBSSI plays a role because we have 180 offices across the country. This is what we've been doing for 30, 35 years. And so it fit in perfectly. That's why we're here today. from that a three-day training workshop has been held to train farmers in the Ketu North municipality of the Voto region to boost their sweet potato production. The workshop organized under the theme Good Agriculture Practice in Sweet Potato Farming for Export was aimed at equipping farmers to have bountiful harvest. Sweet potato is the fourth most important root crop after yam, cassava and taro. The crop is widely cultivated in the northern, upper east, and volta regions and has been identified as a good source of vitamin A. It was disclosed that the widespread of poor sweet potato farming practices has been identified as the main cause for the low export supply, hence the workshop. The farmers were trained on sweet potato growing conditions, cultivation and post-harvest handling, and certification for export processing. Sweet potato has been identified to solve vitamin A deficiency in children, pregnant women, and lactating mothers. Some farmers thanked the partners for the training and applauded the initiative to help more yield during the harvest. This is a fantastic uh, training course that we've had. So far, as farmers, we've been having a lot of training programs, but this one has been so detailed, a three-day program that is scheduled to end on Wednesday. Some of the things that I observed in this training is, you are not just coached to do the things that they are telling you, but you've been made part of the program, that you have to answer, you have to, you also have to ask a question on your own for the facilitator to also um, tell you. So I think it's been all and good for us. And uh, we've not ended yet. But this first day have been very impressive. And I'm hoping to see more refreshing days. From the, the resident of Pane in the Saknarigu municipality of the northern region are appealing to the government to work on their road that links to the community, to the municipal capital, which is Saknarigu. According to the resident, the only road that connects them to the main business town has been cut off by water, making it very difficult for them to have access to the municipal capital and Tamale. The story was filed by our Tamale correspondent Abdel Fatal Munizoya.
Pane is a farming community in the Sagnerugu municipality of the northern region. The community is just a hundred away from the municipal capital, Sagnerugu. According to the 2020 voters register, there are 564 registered voters in the community with over 1,500 population. But the community is cut off from the municipal capital as, as water has washed away all the sand on the road that was constructed four years ago. Some of the residents who spoke to Pan-African TV, Pan-African television at the community on Sunday lamented that the nature of the road makes the nature of the road makes them go to hell whenever they are using it. You have seen the road yourself. If you are riding a bicycle or a motorcycle, you will suffer a lot applying the road. If a woman is in labor and they are to send her to the hospital, it will be difficult. Meanwhile, they said women should not give birth at home again. So we are appealing to the government to work on the road for us. If we want to go to the market, we find it difficult. We are appealing to the government to work on the road for us. We those who use the road daily suffer a lot. Farmers cannot use the road to go and sell their produce at the Tamale market and Sanarugo. Farmers cannot use the road to go and sell their produce at the Tamale market or Sanarugo. So we are begging government and anyone who can help us to come and work on the road for us. Me is the only road that links Beni community to the municipal capital that's Sanargo. And as we can see, the road has been cut off by pioneer rail force. The residents go through hell assessing health care, education and even markets. There's no single health facility in the community. Children in the community assess JHS education in the municipal capital, that's Sanergo. If a woman is on labor and they want to take her to hospital, they have to use this same route. And the state of the road does not allow that. So they are appealing to government and other benevolent organizations to come to their aid, if not constructing the entire road, but just filling up this portion for them so that it become accessible for them. I am Adam Abdi Fatah Wunzuya, reporter for Pan African News, Sanaru Municipality, Beni. A group calling itself Pecan Enclave Residents Association has threatened not to pay property rate if government fails to pull down a building structure which they believe was illegally built on a waterlogged area. Now the group alleged that the building belonging to a cousin of former president John Ejekum Kufu is allegedly seating or seated on a waterlogged area. Into the media, the group indicated that the building has blocked an access road which links resident to the main hospital in the area. The group is calling on the Ayawaso West Municipal Assembly to help address the situation. They described the situation as worrying and called on the Municipal Chief Executive, Sandra Owusu Ahinkra, to help address it. The group has also threatened to direct all property owners in the area not to pay property rate if the assembly fails to address the situation. An encounter with the workers at the site. We met a lady called Ajua Ajikun, claiming to be the developer for me Ade. When we called in the police, she made a phone call in which the person on the other side of the line wanted to talk to whoever was stopping them from working. To our surprise, there was nobody else than Honorable Hartman Ousu Hajman. Mm. Hey. 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 He asked the chairman 
of our association to allow her niece Ajua Ejekun to build on the road. Hey, that is now. Hmm. The same Ajua Ejekun goes round saying she's the niece of former president Kufuor. My question on that is will President Kufuor allow any of his children to come and build in the middle of the road? No, 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 She went on further saying she has a big man and women in this country at her back, and that nobody can stop her from building. Huh. A question. The association and neighbors want to know if this big gentleman and women in this society will use their office to break to block accesses to roads and prevent innocent, mindless, powerless citizens from receiving emergency assistance from our emergency services. In conclusion, the Office of His Excellency, the Vice President, the Chief of Staff, has been petitioned with pictures and dates of the ongoing building. Members and neighbors of the community therefore call on the esteemed offices to urgently take appropriate action in accordance with the bylaws of Ghana to demolish this building to safeguard our community. Yes. The problem is to have this building gone down. Else, like I said, I'm not going to allow any member or any landlord in this community pay property rates. Yes. So in a bid to petition the Ayawasu West Municipal Chief Executive on the matter, some officials at the Municipal Assembly prevented the group from presenting their petition, which resulted in a scaffold. An official who was unhappy with the presence of the media also attempted an assault on one of the Pan-African television cameramen. <laughs> Vice Chairman in Nokin Kansa expressed disappointment in the act by the Assembly. He said the Assembly has assured them of addressing the situation by next week. Association, I mean being their leader, I'm very, very, very much disappointed at the actions. As we all know, when we got here, they told us the MCE was in the office. And then somebody came in that she's not in. We just asked they should just pick up the petition or speak to her, let somebody take it on her behalf. And then we all saw what really happened. And I'm very, very, very disappointed. Now, the, I, the thing I know is that if the MC is not in, is that this evil takes over. And we all saw the way and manner he quickly picked up the petition to run away. Right away. That's the director of the MC. Yes. 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 Running away from the media. And me personally know him for over three years. I've talked with him. I have his private numbers. We, we talk. I exchange pictures with him. With whatever is going on over there. Knowing very well that they are not doing what they are supposed to do. He decided to run away. But thank God, we stood on our feet to make sure he is captured, that he has received it. Hoping that this time they will perform. They promised that we should give them up to Sunday. They are going to put the whole thing down. And if they don't, what is going to happen is going to be two times what we did today, and probably worse. Do you kind of see some fishery at going on? Oh, my brother, don't go there. I have proofs here. I have three confirmations that from the local government, from the assembly here, and the workers over there. And anybody who dares to challenge me, I'll point out. Just like I named whoever is involved in the construction of that road. What, what are you?
group will be hearing from the assembly hopefully tomorrow would have um, a follow up on the story and give you more details on that. Now moving on, resident of Fanya in the Anya Sotum constituency here in the Greater Accra region are calling on government to repair damaged traffic light in the area. Speaking to Pan African Television News, they indicated that the traffic light um, have take have been spoiled for the past two years and had left unattended to a situation they say has resulted in vehicles hitting to death and others injured. <laughs> DSP, DSP, if you are thinking the PRO for the Greater Accra Regional Police Command. Hello. Hello, DSP. Hello. 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 Hello, I can hear you. Hello. I can't really hear you very well, but. Um, so once again, thanks for joining us on Pan African Television News. We want to find out um, why the police presence at Anya was she resulting to hot water spray on residents who were protesting earlier this morning. Hello. 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 Yes. Hello. Can you hear me now? Hello. Yes, I can hear you. Great. I, w I wanted to find out if you can tell us more why the police present at Anya Awashi resulting to hot water spray on residents who were demonstrating this morning. Yes, okay. Thank you very much. You're um, welcome. This was uh, yesterday around uh, 11 o'clock. Yes. Uh, yesterday morning, uh, the police present at Anya Awashi 
find out how do we address the issue of educating the public on policing and proper way of acquiring a permit to protest? Yes, um, this I believe was a spontaneous protest. Um, according to the state commander, I think that particular place where the traffic light is not functioning, mm -hmm. um, it has been repaired a number of times, but when it was repaired, it gets damaged again. And so they have even discussed it that the, the, the new sector, that's the municipal. Um, hello? I'm, I'm here, I'm listening. Yes, yeah, so it has been discussed at the end level, that's the municipal security council, to ensure that um, they bring some, um, address that particular issue, that's the traffic light. Okay. At that Mm-hmm. Okay. Finally, I want to find out if the police are addressing victims of accident cases in Ghana. How we are doing was if we are addressing um, victims of accident cases here in Ghana. Oh, crime is very bad. I thought I'm struggling to hear you. Okay. I think we're going to call you back again and continue with this conversation. Thank you very much for your time. Okay. Okay, so that was DSP Efia Tenge, the PRO for the Greater Accra Regional Police Command. Great. So you join this Pan-African News on Pan-African Television with me, Mordianane Nate. Let's go for a quick break, then we continue with more stories. Stay tuned. President of the Republic of Ghana, Nanado Dankwe Kufuado, has unveiled the first VW vehicle assembled in the newly established VW assembly plant here in Ghana. The models which were assembled and unveiled include Tiguan, Taramount, um, Amarok, Kadi, Polo, and Passat. His Excellency Nana Akufu Addo in his address said, the VW assembly plant will create a lot of highly skilled jobs, reduce the high amounts of foreign exchange used in the importation of second-hand vehicles, and help strengthen the Ghanaian currency through exportation of made-in-Ghana vehicles. This, as a result, will create a lot of highly skilled jobs, reduce the high amounts of foreign exchange used in the importation of second-hand vehicles, and thereby help strengthen the Ghanaian currency, whilst at the same time, earn the nation foreign exchange through the exportation of made in Ghana vehicles. That is why I am pleased that a major global automobile company such as Volkswagen has decided to assemble a number of its plants 
right here in Ghana. Not only for the rest of Greece, but also for the larger West African market. The Minister of Trade and Industry, Honorable Alan Chermantin, disclosed that the step will take Ghana to the global automobile map. He also emphasized that the company in Ghana will reduce the importation bill and also stimulate growth of other sectors, especially the production of plastic, metals, steels, and other materials used for making car parts. And if Ghana wants to become a big global player, we must learn from what these other countries have done. And so I believe that, Mr. President, today we are sowing the seed of what potentially could propel Ghana onto the global economic landscape. But, Mr. President, we are not doing this because others are doing it. And I remember when we first started talking about developing the auto industry in Ghana, the regular refrain was that, my friend, you are not there yet. Take your time. Yes, indeed. My response has always been, when do you want to get there? How do you get there? The Chief Executive Officer of Universal Motor Limited, Mr. Sobi Akkad, and the first ever appointed CEO of VW Motors Ghana, Mr. Jeffrey Opon Pepper, expressed their sincere gratitude to the President of Ghana for approving the welcoming VW in Ghana. And I believe that Ghana Automotive Development Policy has the potential to take our country to this level. Your Excellency, President of the Republic of Ghana, Nana Abu Danko Akufuadu, Minister of Trade and Industry, Honorable Chile Martin, Honorable Cabinet Ministers, Honorable Ambassadors, representatives of state agencies, international organizations, and businesses, distinguished guests, all protocols observed. On behalf of the shareholders, board of directors, management, and staff of Universal Motors, I wish you a good day. Universal Motors has a long established history with Volkswagen in Ghana. Our company has been licensed a Volkswagen importer since 2005. Over this time, we have entrenched the VW brand in the local market and built a good customer base. At Universal Motors, we are truly excited and honored to have been entrusted with the responsibility of assembling Volkswagen vehicles for the people of Ghana. Tema Magistrate Court has ordered that the 28-year-old mother who allegedly murdered her two children in Tema should undergo a psychiatric examination to ascertain her mental stability. Now the court presided over by Mrs. Akosia Anochewe Japon granted the order when prosecution made an application to the effect when the accused Abigail Ibubia appeared before it. Ibubia whose plea was not taken, was also remanded into police custody after a provisional charge of murder was read and explained to her in the tree language. Inspector Emmanuel Kleku Mensa, prosecutor, told the court that on July 30, 2020, at about 17.30 hours, the term original CID had information that two children were found dead at Mahin in Tema. An unemployed mother had allegedly poisoned her two children, a boy and a girl, age one and three years respectively. The suspect who was picked up by the police confirmed lacing the food of her children with glucose, upon an advice from a friend which is yet to be ascertained by the police. The crime scene team and investigators indicated that when they visited the scene, they found the motionless body of a boy and a girl, aged two years and eight months, respectively, in a wooden structure. The bodies were subsequently sent to the police hospital morgue for preservation and autopsy. According to the team, no marks of assault were found on the bodies. However, their mouth and nostrils were found foamy. The case was adjourned to August 17, 2020. 
Meanwhile, family of the 30-year-old woman is calling on the authorities to have mercy on their daughter due to her mental health status. However, family of the suspect say their daughter, who has been suffering from some form of mental disorders, might have carried out the heinous crime without her knowledge. Sister of the suspect, Selena Jo, said her depressed sister had no intention to kill the children, stressing on her depression caused by marital issues and others. A close friend of the suspect, Cynthia Sante, also indicated that the suspect, who had been neglected by her family and that of her in-laws for some time now, has really been through a lot, which she believes might have taken a toll on her mental health. On our local story, let's take a look at some health benefits of guava leaves. Guava leaves have been hailed as one of the superfruits as it provides several health benefits. It is extraordinary rich in vitamin C and antioxidants that are beneficiary for the body. The potassium in guavas helps normalize blood pressure levels since it contains about 80% of water and rich in fiber. It also aids weight loss. The young leaves of the guava tree can be brewed to make a magical tea. Diarrhea, according to a study published in the Revesta du Institut de Medicina Tropical de Sao Paulo, guava leaf extracts and inhibits the growth of Staphylococcus aureus bacteria, a common cause of diarrhea. People suffering from diarrhea who drink guava leaf tea may experience less abdominal pain fewer and less watery stools and a quicker recovery. According to an article published in Nutrition and Metabolism, guava leaf tea inhibits several different enzymes that convert carbohydrates in the digestive tract into glucose, potentially slowing its uptake into your blood. Guava leaves help prevent complex carbs from turning into sugar, promoting rapid weight loss. Guava leaves can lower the risk of cancer, especially breast, prostate and oral cancers due to high quantities of the antioxidant lycopene. Various studies have revealed that lycopene plays a significant role in lowering the risk of cancer due to their high percentage of vitamin C. Guava have high astringent properties and guava leaves rank even higher. Apply a decoction of the leaves on your skin to help tone and tighten facial muscles. Guava leaves for hair can keep all your hair related problems are bay. Drinking guava leaf tea regularly helps improve quality of sleep. It calms your nerves and quietens your mind, making it easier to sleep into slumber. Guava leaves contain vitamin B3 and vitamin B6, which helps in improving blood circulation to the brain, stimulating cognitive function and relaxing the nerves. Pan-African News on Pan-African Television with me, Mo Diana Nenata. We're streaming live on Facebook at Pan-African Television. Business is next after this break. Stay tuned. Potassium in guavas helps normalize.
of DKM Microfinance in the Bronga Hafo region, whose fund were locked up, have expressed excitement over former President John Dramani Mohammed's promise to pay back their monies when re elected on December 7th. Former President Mahama made this promise when he outdoored his running mate, Professor Jenano Pokwajaman, last Tuesday. Speaking to the media, Chairman of the group James Balfour Sapon indicated that all customers of the defunct microfinance company have begun a vigorous campaign to get former President Mahama re elected to fulfill his promise of paying them their locked up funds. He explained how President Ekufu Adu deceived them into voting for him in the 2016 general elections. <laughs> Say, my general assembly and my edda. The bois and people are buying a one in some pa or kaye, so Baba where my answer a case come. Now, Nina no buy no, I never be a ampa at home. A few grand no can say I put you at a time. And you know, my dear, I see a bar, a man, gang, ah, your bois and people, a man of bar by me, and now you see car at the house, say, what say, a proper piece of car, a man. Any <laughs> And you can't send me pray. The MP Soma, no more pray MP Sambreno, and you can't send me to a chia. And this is a fine. I'm going to say, and the two are back at the man. I'm going to say, no more, no more, and you can't be to say, or Drew, and grandson of MP, which is as much a man, and grand a lawyer. Or no, say, so many nano, I saw a chia, and say, no, 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 lawyer, or the man. And now, pay a minister, open office for Anna, no, no, and for Papa. And in the summer, you're saying, I'm sorry, a tear and people are buying, send the answer to you, and this is a buying. And here they said, Yeah, and I can't believe this. I said, Ah, now Mahama, and now Sam Breno, or Kenya, how much I was going to buy it. Now then they say, Yamakoto, about Amano, you and no credit on the year, what's left here, or who's I am from Swamp, or your bonnie, a tear gun of mine. And in the year, I say, I'm a friend. Sanya, <laughs> Many the time MC is here, say, yeah, how you run an office here, make a case, can't say, oh, can't say, oh, yeah, it's not an to the Denbonga Havu region was the most affected region by the DKM Bruhaha, which had caused the National Democratic Congress to lose many of its parliamentary seats in the 2016 general election. Enterprise unit of Vodafone Ghana, Vodafone Business has launched Business Runway Webinar Series. This is aimed at empowering small and medium scale enterprise SMEs with the requisite skills, insights, and opportunities that would enable them to have managed the and build thriving businesses in the country. The knowledge sharing platform, which is also aimed at building the capacity of SMEs and sharing best practice with them, reaffirms Vodafone's undying passion and commitment to help sustain businesses. The maiden edition of the webinar is in partnership with the National Board for Small Scale Industry, NBSSI, under the theme after the coronavirus elevation program, What's Next? The Way Forward for Ghanaian SMEs. The event will be held on Friday from 8.30 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. AM. Speakers for the virtual SME webinar include Kosiyanki Aye, Executive Director of the MBSSI, 
Patricia Bunai, Chief Executive Officer of Vodafone Ghana, Dominic Kwame Edu, CEO of First National Bank, and Francisca B. Opoku, CEO of Solution Oasis Limited. Commenting on the initiative, Tawa Bolari, Director of Enterprise Business Unit, EBU, as Vodafone Ghana disclosed that small and medium-sized enterprises, SMEs, form the backbone of media platforms. At Vodafone Ghana on Facebook and on Instagram, and on Zoom with ID 912-806-3388. The Vodafone Business Runway Webinar is in collaboration with the Ministry of Business Development, National Entrepreneur and Innovation Plan, Association of Ghana Industries, AGI, and Ghana Expert Promotion Authority. the international news from my international partners people's dispatch stay tuned This advertisement has been vetted and approved by the FDA. Released on Wednesday, July 29th, the document the highlight number of killings of land rights and environmental activists around the world. The report published by Global Witness, an NGO based in Washington, D.C., titled Defending Tomorrow, stated that over 212 land defenders were killed in 21 countries, the highest ever documented so far. Latin American nations. 148 of these documented killings, accounting for nearly 7 out of 10 cases. Colombia reported over 64 killings, followed by Brazil, 24, Mexico, 18, and Honduras, 14. The Amazon region alone counted for 33 of these deaths. Latin America was followed by Asia, 55, with the Philippines accounting for 78% of them and Africa, 7. Europe was largely unaffected with only Romania reporting two deaths. The report has identified that activists working against mining projects were the most likely to get killed, with 50 such deaths. This was followed by 34 activists killed while opposing agribusiness expansion and 24 killed while exposing logging. Honduras has reported the highest per capita killings of large activists and also the highest spike in such killings in 2019, increasing from four in 2018. By sector assassination of activists opposed to logging saw the highest jump since 2018, nearly 85 percent. Nearly two out of every five activists killed in 2019 were indigenous people, according to the report. The report also documented that between 2015 and 2019, indigenous activists were disproportionately targeted. Killing of indigenous activists counted for a third of sad death in the four-year period, even though their share of the global population is less than five. U.S. President Donald Trump on Thursday, July 30th, threatened to deploy the National Guard of Portland if local and state authorities do not quell protest. His statement came after the city police took over the security of the city courthouse from federal law enforcement agencies.
The courthouse was a place of intense violence on the part of federal forces and protesters on multiple occasions. Trump accused the state administration of not doing enough to disperse the nuclear demonstration, calling the demonstration a behaved of terrorist. The president also stated that the forces deployed by his administration will remain in the city in standby. This statement by the president comes despite the Oregon state governor, Kate Brown, having made an arrangement for gradual repel of federal forces from the city. The governor responded to Trump by criticizing his failed attempt at violently cracking down on the protest. Trump has made similar threat to deploy National Guard on cities and state to quell the anti-racist protest earlier this month. Ever since the protest erupted in May, the deployment of the parliamentary force against political unrest has been the largest ever. Over 17,000 guardsmen were deployed across 26 of the 50 states last year. Recently, after much complaints from protesters, state and city officials in Portland and the state of Oregon have complained of unlawful detention by federal forces of protesters in Portland. Several reports emerged of protesters taken away in unmarked vehicles without warrant and without being read. The Miranda Rights, a customary disclaimer of the detainees, right to remain silent. Those detention prompted an intensification of the ongoing anti-racism protests across the United States. Since Saturday last week, a demonstration erupted in solidarity with protests across the country. Now across the Philippines, thousands marched on Monday, July 27th, in protests against the administration of President Rodi Rodrigo Duterte and the recently passed anti-terror law. The protest march came hours before Duterte's State of the Nation speech. The protests were organized by various social movements representing the causes of women, farmers, workers and students, along with religious groups, business leaders and academics. The protests were held as by the primitive arrest by authorities across. According to CNN Philippines, at least 34 people suspected of participating in the protest were arrested earlier in the day before the protest. Rappler reported that in the Calabazon administrative region alone, next to the capital, 64 people were arrested on their way to join a demonstration. In the capital city, Manila, hundreds marched on the campus of the University of Philippian Diliman, UP Diliman. Participants marched by foot with placards and slogans saying, Ut du Tet, and they were followed by a motorcade demonstration. Similarly, large rallies were held across the country with protesters demanding the ouster of Duterte, repeal of controversial anti-terror law and condemning political assassination and the government's mismanagement of COVID-19 pandemic. In his address, Duterte very notably avoided speaking about the pandemic and the measures taken by the government. This was widely criticized by opposition leaders and activists alike. sports.